What is going on, Pats Nation? You guys already know who it is. Patriots Global here back with another video, and in this one, I want to talk about the trade that just went down between the New England Patriots and the Las Vegas Raiders here. Now, as we all know, Bill Belichick just absolutely loves to do deals with his former disciples, this time in Josh McDaniels, who, of course, we all know was formerly known for the longest time throughout most of his tenure as the New England Patriots offensive coordinator and now the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. And because this is a former Belichick disciple, because he has such a good relationship with McDaniels, you knew that he was going to give him a hometown discount. And I hate to say it, but that's just exactly what this trade was. It was a hometown discount here for Josh McDaniels and the Raiders. And I don't love it. I don't love this trade. We're going to get into exactly why I don't love this trade, what it means for the Patriots, what it means for the Raiders. And of course, a little bit about Justin Haran for all the Raiders fans that are watching this video. But basically what's happening here is the Patriots are shipping off versatile offensive tackle Justin Haran to the Las Vegas Raiders in exchange for draft picks. Now, what draft pick is that? They're going to be swapping 6th and 7th round picks for 2023. So essentially, the Patriots are not gaining any draft picks here. They're just moving up from the 7th uh, round to the 6th round, and the Raiders are moving back from their 6th round to the 7th. This is one of those trades that I'm not going to lie, was a little bit surprised to see. Now, we did hear that once the Patriots signed former Patriots uh, offensive tackle Marcus Cannon to the practice squad, making a reunion there, that they could potentially ship someone from their offensive line off just because of the depth that they have there. Obviously, for the Patriots, you have your starting tackles with Isaiah Wynn and uh, Trent Brown. Then you have Yanni Kajus, who's really just a left tackle, but he's shown out pretty well this offseason. You have Mike Onwenu who can pop out to the tackle position if you need be. In that case, you'd probably put Jason Hines in his spot at right guard and then bump Onwenu out to right tackle. And again, now we also have Marcus Cannon on the practice squad who can be used as an elevation up to three times before they have to put him on the active roster. And honestly, could be someone they do just promote to the active roster in order to get some depth there. Because again, the only guy you have at um, right tackle as a depth piece is going to be Michael Onwenu. Other than that, you right now do not have any depth. Andrew Stuber, a guy that is on IR, he's not going to be returning for you. Yanni Kajust, again, mainly just a depth piece there at left tackle. He's not going to play right tackle for you. And I think that's why having somebody like Justin Haran was so important for the Patriots. I think he's shown a lot of promise throughout his time with New England, more so I would say at left tackle than he did right tackle but nonetheless you are getting a tackle a swing tackle and a very good depth tackle in Justin Haran who's versatile who can play both the right side and the left side and right now with the Patriots you don't have a guy who's going to be able to do that now that he is shipped off. Like I said, Haran has played pretty well throughout his tenure so far with the Patriots over the last two years. He's actually gotten quite a few starts for the Patriots too. In 2020, he played in 12 games for the Patriots, starting in six of them. And then in 2021, he played in 16 games for the Patriots, starting in four. I mean, he's shown several times, you know, Isaiah Wynn goes down, Trent Brown goes down. Justin Haran is the guy that they plug in. So clearly they do value Justin Haran. And again, he has had his up moments. He's had a lot of down moments too, especially in recent memory. You know, this offseason, in training camp, in preseason, he really wasn't looking all that great. But that's again, I think the Patriots were playing him more on the right side where he does fare a little bit better over on the left side. And look, I get it if you say you're comfortable with where your starting left tackles are at right now. You're comfortable with the depth you have with Yanni Kajust. Mike Onwenu if you need him, and now Marcus Cannon. But if you're going to trade Justin Haran, at least get better value for him because it's at the tackle position, which has a lot of value in the NFL. A lot of teams right now need tackle help. Not just the Raiders. I would say, you know, the Cowboys are a team that needs help there. I would say the Bengals are a team that could still use some help there along the offensive tackle position for their O-line. So it's not even just the positional value at that point. It's the fact that he's also versatile at both tackle positions too that I really believe you could have gotten around a fifth round pick. Easily a fifth round pick, I would say, for Justin Haran. At the end of the day too, you do look at the trade details and the Patriots really just absolutely got the bare minimum because it's not even like they're getting an additional sixth round pick. It's not that they're getting an additional seventh round pick. They are swapping a 6th and 7th round pick with the Raiders. 
So again, we're not adding anything here draft wise. We're just increasing our position from where we were before, which again is something you usually do with a player you're expecting to just end up release or at least is on the roster bubble which is hard for me to believe that someone like Justin Haran was the 52nd or 53rd player on the Patriots 53-man roster right now. Now, I also already know some Patriots fans are going to be asking, what does this mean cap-wise? Well, it does give them a little bit more wiggle room cap-wise. It's really not going to be a lot because of the, the position that he was in when he originally came and signed a contract with the New England Patriots. It's about an $800,000 increase for New England, so that puts us right now at about $3.3 million. I think the more interesting thing here is that it's going to free up a roster spot. Is that for someone to come back like Daniel Laquale, who was serving a two-game suspension for the NFL? Looked good for the Patriots within the interior of the Patriots' defensive line, but so far the defensive line's looked really good. Where is he going to kind of come in as, as that rotation? Is he really going to be proposed to that 53-man roster right away? Or is he someone that, you know, comes back and the Patriots just let him clear waivers and then put him back on the practice squad? So I think there's a lot of moves the Patriots could make here. It wouldn't surprise me to see maybe someone elevated from the practice squad to the 53. And again, you need some offensive line depth here. You know, the Patriots O-line hasn't exactly been the best. You do need as much depth as you can possibly get. So at this point, I would say the two most likely spots for that final 53-man roster position is either promoting Marcus Cannon from the practice squad to the 53, or, you know, you're freeing up that roster spot to bring back Daniel Aquale for the interior of your defensive line. And then if you're the Raiders, this move obviously makes a lot of sense. You need offensive line help. Your O-line has really not looked that great. You know, Carr has looked extremely pressured throughout the first two weeks of the season, which has led to really a slow start for the Raiders' offense and making them currently 0-2. I think if their offense is going to get going at all, they need to start with that offensive line and start giving Carr a little bit more time and keeping him a little bit more protected. You know, Haran's not necessarily going to step in and be a starting piece, but he's going to be a swing tackle for you. And nonetheless, it's going to give you depth at both, both sides of your offensive line. You also know that Josh McDaniels knows how to use Justin Haran. And uh, actually, now that I'm reading a little bit more into this, it's actually 2024, guys. This isn't even 2023, meaning that this isn't even for the upcoming draft. This is another year away. This isn't 2023. This is 2024. Two years from now. Two years from now. You're telling me the Patriots couldn't even get a draft pick for this year. Again, this truly is a hometown discount for Josh McDaniels and the Raiders. I think the switch here for Justin Haran from New England to Las Vegas is really going to be next to nothing. It's going to be the easiest switch for him compared to any other team he could have been traded to. The systems are really the exact same. Like I mentioned before, Josh McDaniels being the Patriots offensive coordinator for so long, the first two years of Justin Haran's career too, you know he knows how to utilize him. And you know that he's going to use him to the absolute best of his ability. He also has two years left on that contract. So really for Raiders fan, you're getting a guy on a really cheap deal who's going to at the very least be a good swing tackle for you, a very good depth piece at both sides of the offensive line. And he can come in and be a quality starter if you need to be. Do you want him to be your starter? No, but he can come in and be a quality piece for you if you really need him. Again, for the Patriots, it's just a little surprising, especially when you look at the compensation. I think if the compensation was better, this isn't something you would hate, but the compensation is just so bad for, I think, what you could have gotten for him, um, especially because I do believe other teams would have been interested in him, that you just can't help but to ask yourself, Bill Belichick, what are you doing? But you also can't help but to say, you know what, Raiders, we did you a favor. So when we end up needing a favor later on, whether it's this season or this upcoming offseason, you better repay us. Uh, but a guy, too, that's not just a great guy on the field, but also a great guy off the field. You know, back in, you know, March of 2021, he was honored um, by the police department in Arizona as a hero for an incident that happened with uh, an assault, you know, issue that I can't really get too much into because YouTube does not like us talking about it. But you get what I'm saying. You can read up on it if you really want to. But New England loses a little bit of depth here along the offensive line, and the Raiders gain a little bit of depth there on the offensive line as the New England Patriots and the Las Vegas Raiders are swapping 6th and 7th round picks for the 2024 
not 2023, 2024 draft. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Let me know in the comment section below. Remember to leave a big like on this video and subscribe to the channel for all of your New England Patriots news. Like always, I appreciate you guys for watching, and go Pats.